I'm Sam Roberts. I'm the festival director for IndieCade. I helped Stephanie Barish and Celia Pierce start the festival 12-ish years ago. It was 2007. Stephanie started in 2006, but we did our first exhibit in 2007. We're actually at E3 in 2007. It's the first exhibit we did. I oversee all of the content for the festival and specifically manage our jurying and curatorial processes around games. We do meetings with industrial partners who are looking for cool game developers or cool games that they may want to fund or publish or convince to work on their platform. How has Indicate changed over time? We're bigger than we once were. We're still not very big. We're an independent games festival with independent funding, showing independent developers who have usually no funding. When I very first started doing this, we didn't really even get a lot of games submitted. There was a low awareness. It was harder to make games. There was more investment, hours, time required to get something that's sort of what you might call a minimum viable product. There was less interest in what games could be, I think. Not that there was none, but uh, the audience for gaming was smaller. Less of them were interested in what might be different and new, and there were less avenues for making new, creative, different interactive experiences that people might be interested in. Live Interactive was nowhere near the size that it is now. Cell phones had smaller install bases and were not used for interactive experiences in gamings. Uh, we didn't have VR or AR. Projection mapping was very primitive. Motion controllers that come standard in most video game controllers and phones now. Vibration control, all that stuff wasn't really around or being harnessed. Early on, honestly, games that just were like, oh, what if we used this thing? Was something that we might show, right? That's always been what IndieCade's about. It's a, it's a place where we try to highlight the breadth and diversity of all the work that's happening in play and interactive and we try to bring a huge variety of play experiences on different technical platforms, play experiences by different kinds of people, play experiences trying to create different kinds of experience uh, in different kinds of formats. We try to bring all those folks together so they can influence each other and be inspired by one another and collaborate and start to normalize some of that really exciting stuff and bring it into the industry. So the change is that on some level, I don't know, it's certainly not just us, right? But we've been successful. And a lot of this stuff that we brought into the festival that wasn't really games has become a part of the games space and scene. What's different about indie business today? There are now economic systems built up around independent games that did not exist before. So you can more effectively chart a path towards potential success or at least having a business. There's wisdom and people to talk to. When we first started doing this, devs had no idea how they would get there necessarily and they just talked to each other. There's also different because, because there's so much more stuff and so many people who now see a path to economic feasibility through independent. Uh, competition has gone way up. So it no longer helps just to be good. You have to be good, have a plan, and get lucky. How has indie game coverage at E3 evolved? 12 years ago, it was a pretty hard sell to get someone from more mainstream media to cover this stuff. It doesn't look like AAA video games. It doesn't look like a lot of the rest of E3. For years, that was our only selling point to mainstream media. We're different than everything else out there, right? Uh, it's still one of our main selling points. We're different than everything else on the show floor. But now we. There's an understanding that there could be real value in that difference. There's people who are actively coming and looking for that difference, who are excited about it or seeking it. And so that's a difference too. What drives your work with Indicate? I love innovation. I, I love what's new. In a professional capacity, what excites me about indie games is that it is the place where we are doing in my eyes, the most experimentation with the medium of play. And play is a medium that I think is going to be the lead medium of the 21st century. It feels like 
the biggest TV shows are the ones that everyone is tweeting about, which is essentially right there. They're enjoying this media with everybody else together, right? And so this is what play is about and what a lot of experimentation seems to me to be about. And it's what I get professionally super excited about, about independent games. What types of games are you focused on lately? There's a huge amount of excitement and production right now around procedural generation. We've certainly been a part of games for a very, very long time. I've been playing NetHack for a very, 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 very long time. But what people are doing with it and how they're leveraging it to create narrative, to create like explorable systems and explorable space is all really interesting stuff. And there's stuff here in the booth that's using that. And uh, I think we'll see a lot of stuff at the festival. And then I'm really excited about sort of adaptation and documentary and what those things mean and particularly for systems because those things are similar for systems now we make a system that sort of like becomes a metaphor for another story or a real world system or a, uh, an actual historical event or series of events right and we have some of that stuff here too how can we follow you and indicate indicate is www.indicate.com and the best place to see me maybe express myself online would probably be Twitter, where I'm at Ashton-esque, A-S-H-T-O-N-E-S-Q.